from the eyes of the Chinese Communist Party, specifically Jiang Zemin, who was the uh, dictator at the time in China, was that the number of people practicing exceeded the number of people in the Chinese Communist Party. He also wanted to consolidate his power within China through kind of this struggle or movement. You can see that throughout Chinese history every 10 years. You have, you have the student movement in 89, 99, you have Falun Gong. So they, there's this always kind of like rise of power through this iron fist, grouping people against you know a group of people. This mm. is sort of Marxism 101. And so um, in 1999, they outlawed Falun Gong and started a brutal crackdown uh, that you know has lasted until today, where they illegally jail, you know, brutally persecute, um, torture, kill, even forced organ harvesting, which we just discussed on today's show. When a government is going to do that, they need to turn the people against Falun Gong, mm. right? So they need to somehow figure out how do we get all the people in China with us? Liu Chenzheng, right? He turns from this ruffian to a good person. People looked at him and said, wow, that's great. This Falun Gong thing, I'm riding my bike 15 minutes. I see all these people practicing. They've all changed. One out of 13 people. I know people that have practiced. It's not bad, like the Communist Party says, but the Communist Party is pumping out all this propaganda every night, right? They control all the media stations. So every night people are watching their TV and just pumping out lies, right? This is an evil cult. It's bad for society. And so it's, but it's not really working because again, people knew people that practiced, right? Yeah. So 1999, 2000, it's not really working. They're still persecuting people, but the Chinese people have not turned on Falun Gong. Mm. And so this all changed and is very relevant to the story of the TV broadcast hijack because this all changed in 2001. And in 2001, the, the, the Chinese Communist Party staged an act called the self-immolation in Tiananmen Square. And so they they got these people that, you know, the Washington Post did a story later, none of these people were ever found to practice Falun Gong. They got these people to set themselves on fire in an alleged protest, right? And they Chinese Communist Party had cameras set up beforehand. They had people on site with um, fire extinguishers. So it was total setup. Um, and they filmed it. And, and the really sad part is they had a lady there that died um, and her daughter was 12 years old. And her daughter actually later died in the hospital. Mm -hmm. um, and some people actually suspect that maybe the Chinese Communist Party ended her life because you, you, the, the truth was that they never practiced Falun Gong and they were afraid that the, the girl would speak out. But what was captured on video and cut later with the interviews after they were, you know these people were burned and how they cut it was like you know propaganda 101. And it made it seem like this weird Falun Gong group that they wanted people to feel like were weird or a cult had actually set themselves on fire, had convinced this lady and her daughter who later died, right, to, to, mm -hmm. to, to kill themselves, which of course is a lie. And so because it was pumped out night after night after mm -hmm. night, really started to turn people against Falun Gong. 